What are some truths some parents refuse to accept? Children are not your property, nor your employees. Neither your slaves. The older your children get, the more autonomy you need to grant them. I was expected to act like an adult, but be perfectly fine with being treated like a child. I can't even describe how frustrating this was. I was 19 or 20 and still had to ask my parents permission to go to the mall with a friend. One day I didn't come home by 10 or whenever they wanted me back by so they said I couldn't go out anymore. I decided to go out anyway and I was walking out the door when my dad dragged me back by the neck and tossed me on the bed and yelled at me. Anyway, the bitmojis I think they were called were very popular on Facebook at the time and I made one of me in a diaper that said Jasenia isn't allowed to grow up and my dad commented and said if you stopped acting like a child we could stop treating you like one so I responded maybe if I was treated like an adult I'd act like one. Then my dad deleted the comment and the next day my mom yelled at me for fighting with my dad on Facebook. There's a time when you need to let your kids make mistakes, so they can learn from them. Life is pretty short, so if they have a goal, let them go for it. That sometimes their kids have valid opinions and instead of interrupting them and pulling the because I said so and that's just how it is cards, they could listen to their child and make them feel heard instead of suppressed. I tried very hard to do this with our kids. We always gave a reason why something was wrong or not allowed. Sometimes that explanation was just this, action, affects other people in ways you may or may not know. Or often, we want you to be happy and make others happy your whole life, and this doesn't help you do that. Obviously, the statements were changed to be age appropriate, so sometimes it might as well have been because we said so. Now they're teenagers and I don't know if we made their lives any better, but I know we have a lot of great and mostly civil debates about things and they definitely talk to me about things most teens probably wouldn't. I guess we'll see in a decade or so how things are going. I'm so glad you're parenting this way. Honestly I often feel like I can't have an opinion in my own house because if I question my mom she gets mad and even if I have a valid argument she doesn't hear me out constantly interrupts me, and ends the conversation by either flat out walking out of the room or yelling at me to drop it. Even if I'm having a civilized debate with a sibling about differing opinions she immediately shuts it down, assuming off the bat that it's an argument. Overall makes me feel like I'm not allowed to express myself, so I'm sure just allowing your kids the experience of being allowed to talk and explain themselves and hear your reasoning behind why things are the way they are is great for them. Your kid is an individual. There is a good chance that their interests, hobbies, and passions are going to be different from yours. Support and encourage your kids to be themselves and not a mini you. Also, for the love of God have a conversation about how you and your partner plan on raising your kid. My parents had such drastically different and bad in their own ways parenting styles. It was really confusing. That you are responsible for your kids. Yes you need to feed them, clothe them, provide shelter, love them, etc. It's amazing how many parents don't want to do some of those or feel like it's a burden to do those. You as a parent are responsible for teaching your kids proper manners and common decency. Not their teachers slash tutors slash babysitter slash etc. I briefly worked as a Japanese teacher and I was surprised at how little some of these parents were involved in their kids lives and expected me to address all their problems during the short few hours I had them for the week. Working at an elementary school. It's shocking how some parents do so little, treating the school like a daycare slash etiquette practice slash life lesson slash whatever. As though they want the school itself to raise a well-mannered child. I desperately want to say something. You really think we have the time and resources to make the perfect child? We have classrooms filled with kids, barely enough staff members and a deficit of supplies. We can only squeeze so much in a day's lesson. Assuming government tests aren't shoved down our throats cause if we refuse, we are more screwed than before. 
Raising one kid to be successful in life is hard enough but you expect us to do it with 25 plus kids per class? Or are you trying to tell us your little Bobby slash Susie is more important for God knows why? Heck! Why did you even have kids if you're not gonna put in the dang work? Sigh. Alas, I stay quiet as not to tick off the parents and give my colleagues more grief. I'm just thankful not all parents are like that. Their children have their own hopes and dreams, their own beliefs. A very good friend is leading an entirely second life to keep her mother from controlling her or belittling her decisions. It's very stressful to not encourage their children to find themselves. Oof! I led an entirely second life for years. It was hard, but not as hard as dealing with my mom reaction to me being who I am. I kept it up until I had kids and physically couldn't anymore without putting them in a yucky situation. There's been a huge falling out. But I moved across the country and am really enjoying life. I hope not to repeat the pattern. If your kid needs help, speech therapy, tutoring, medication, occupational therapy, act. It is not a reflection on you personally. Sometimes kids struggle. That's okay. Making sure your kid has all the tools they need to succeed is your responsibility as a parent. I worked in a charity for people who had attempted suicide. One parent was highly in denial and claimed that her kid confused her sleeping pills with candy and got sick. Twice. Once in elementary school and again in high school. Reading this thread made me want to share a quote I heard a long time ago. When they are little, treat the small things like big things, because if you don't when they are older, they won't share the big things with you. The small things are big to them. Can't remember. That your children may turn out completely different to you, different interests, different hobbies, different ideologies, different religions. Don't get pissy at your kid because he likes reading instead of football. 1. That we aren't always going to be your baby too. You are not always right 3. Sometimes we don't tell you the full truth for a reason, like it backfiring on us and making the whole situation worse for us in every way shape and form. That when kids grow up, they will enjoy spending time with you if you treat them like a friend. They will not enjoy spending time with you if you continue to act like an authority figure or someone who knows better.